These guys understand what's at stake and, and uh, the, the comp of it all, and, and so they were really tuned in. Um, I mean, they're giving everything they got, everything they were doing. You know, from the communication part of it, um, they're studying extra. They're getting in early. They're you know they're they're trying to make sure that they put them themselves in the best position. It's it's really obvious. So uh, uh, Gino has come back. You know, like we said, he has so much command of what we're doing that he just automatically is ahead. And so um, and he's he's trying to ride that. You know, and build on that. So um, I'm, I'm I'm proud of the way he's taking to it. So we're really doing this. Hot Charles Robinson, we're really doing this up in Seattle. We're doing the Drew Locke, Geno Smith thing. No disrespect, but they're like the only team in the league, which is why everybody tried to put Baker Mayfield in Seattle, that either right. isn't all set at quarterback or doesn't have at least a developmental prospect or, you know, you don't kind of know what they're doing. They don't have a plan. They don't look like a team with a plan, more or less. Or... On the contrary, is that the plan? Are they just content to love the one they're with and punt this thing to 23? What are people around the league saying about the way the Seahawks are approaching their quarterback position? Well, they would have actually agreed. I, look, there are a number of teams that agree that Drew Locke probably brings more to the table um, than a number of, of the rookie quarterbacks would have. That his skill set. He, um, he, he definitely put on for his city. Yeah, that's, well. my, that's still my favorite video of all time. <laughs> it's him rapping the young Jeezy on the sideline. That's still my favorite Broncos video of recently. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, for, just from a, but from a tool standpoint, um, you know, I think the things that Seattle liked about him when he was in the draft, none of those have changed. It's just, um, you know, I think they feel like he needed a reboot uh, when they made the deal um, and and brought Drew Lock in. Um, in that Russell Wilson trade, I talked to somebody in the organization said, we really like Drew and don't discount that Drew could be our starting quarterback in 2022. You know, I, I still think there, if, if Baker Mayfield, there was no cost to Baker Mayfield, I do think they would be interested in that. And, and what I mean by no cost is they pay virtually no salary and don't really have to give up any assets. I think if they had a fairly free shot at Baker Mayfield, absolutely they would take that shot. They feel like Baker Mayfield has talent. There's no question about it. They just don't want to give up anything in a situation where they feel like the Browns are going to have to figure out a way to part ways with Baker regardless. So, um, you know, I, I think right now they feel like if they're going into the season with these two guys, they'll, they're, they're fine rolling with it. But let's get through some of the passing camp. Okay, let's get through... Um, some of the passing program. Let's get through a mini camp and see, you know, if they're still as confident. And and frankly, I think they also know if this doesn't work out, we're going to be staring next year at a, at a pretty thick quarterback class where we like a number of guys. With, with two ones and two twos, right? Yeah, I mean, they're, look, they're going to be a player in the quarterback. If, they, if, like I said, if this does not work out this year, there's no question in my mind Seattle will be a player in the quarterback market next season. Now, Charles, I know that the NFL has plenty of money, so we're not worried about paying any bills for the NFL. But let's just let's just pretend that the NFL is at the kitchen table having that that budget conversation. How do we make ends meet? And they're saying, "Are right, who do we, who's going to cost us more in the next two to three years in legal fees? Will it be the Las Vegas Raiders or will it be the Washington Commanders? Who do we have to worry about the most? That's a good question. It's, I mean, it seems pretty close. Well, I, I think another way to look at that too is if they stared at those two owners, they would say, um, who is the poorest between the two? I mean, Mark, Mark Davis is one of the most um, cash poor owners in the NFL. And I think that Dan Snyder, part of what has kept Dan Snyder in the good graces of the NFL is that he is able to broker um, some deals. He is in a region where um, politically, he's very connected. Mark Davis doesn't have any of those things going for him. And, you know, so I, I would just say, look, obviously the Raiders part company with the team president and on the heels of it, uh, you know, this individual comes out and says, look, I, I raised concerns to Mark Davis about the workplace environment and, and some things about him in particular. I, he, and I'm paraphrasing him here, but, um, you know, he said, look, I didn't feel like it was addressed. And so he turned to the NFL. That's remarkably... Um, uncommon to ever see a, a team executive that high up in an organization to essentially go over the boss's head. Now, right. I haven't spoken to someone there. Um, 
I think the feeling was he knew once he had brought, you know, whatever he had brought to Mark Davis's attention. Again, that's something that hasn't been aired out. I think he felt like this is it for me. I'm done here. Like I'm done in this organization. So it was really sort of a scorched earth situation um, when, when, you know, whatever the confrontation was that he had with Mark Davis, he felt like I'm done here, like I'm finished. And so going to the NFL at that point, um, you know, it was an, it was an element of, of recourse and maybe an element of, of retribution kind of knowing that he was fragged inside the organization. So, um, the NFL is taking this really seriously. I spoke to somebody there uh, in, in the league office and they just said, you know, um, they, they're not revealing the nature of it, but they're just saying like, we're, you know, we're not gonna sit here and, and considering what unfolded with the, the John Gruden situation, we're not just gonna sit here and um, not investigate this and take this seriously. Take that for, you know, <laughs> take that for I what mean, you want when it comes to NFL owners. I mean, I mean, I mean, the irony, just to recap, the investigation into the Washington Commander's toxic and uh, work environment, rife with sexual harassment, claimed John Gruden because of his emails, mm -hmm. which Mark Davis would not have fired John Gruden, but for the release of said emails. And they always complain, how in the world does that organization's sexual harassment investigation claim our head coach on an unrelated matter? And yet all this time, this wasn't just a complaint about something going on in the Raiders organization. This is a complaint, a complaint to Mark Davis about Mark Davis, Mark Davis right. and his behavior. And here we are, I guess is the old song. What's the old gospel song? Sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. <laughs> I guess I'm just like they're, they're, in the court of public opinion. Neither of these dudes, Michael, to your question about Snyder versus Davis, has any kind of credibility because I fully believe that they were cooking the books in Washington because Daniel Snyder would do something like that. And I fully believe that Mark Davis did something inappropriate. And, and when he, when the, when the whistleblower brought it to, attention to it, he tried to uh, tried to punish him accordingly. Like. What credibility do either one of these guys have to stand on when it comes to their character? Is my question. Not really a question. It's more of a statement. But take yeah, it. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's a fair statement. And again, um, remember, part of the cooking the books thing with Washington was what you had a team employee, an ex-team employee, decades long, uh, team employee um, who had parted company, sitting, you know, in front of, you know, congressional committee, sitting here saying. Um, we we're cooking the books <laughs> and I can prove it. And now you have essentially another high and a, I mean, a team president to right. <laughs> it, and uh, let me, and let me, let me say something for a team president to can. And if this is now we'll see, you know, Mark Davis's lawyers there, everybody's being real quiet about this. We're going to find out exactly, you know, what confrontation took place, but for a team president to essentially step to an owner and say, this is serious. It's aimed at you there needs to be some kind of resolution. I mean, like that is, I've frankly, I've never heard of that happening, you know, before. This is the first time I've ever heard of a situation like this where you have uh, someone of that level, that executive layer uh, exiting a franchise and then publicly saying like, hey, you know, there was, there was a big issue here. I confronted the owner about it. It cost me my job. And yeah, I did go over his head and talk to the NFL about it because it was serious. That's a, that's a, any, any, it's I would a lot say to any, make up. <laughs> if, you, oh, you know? well, if there's, and if there's going to be a defense, there's got to be some meat behind that defense. You can't just sit here and right. go, oh, it's not true, but we're not going to talk about it. Right. Like, like this yeah, is, right. this is no going to be public. <laughs> yeah. It's no, this is going to be a public one for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah, Charles, we're about uh, a month and change away from that period where the NFL traditionally gets quiet, you know, mid June, uh, up until the start of training camps. I said traditionally because this year has been crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Season was crazy. Off season crazier. Do you think anything is going to happen in the next month? Is Debo Samuel <laughs> definitely going to stay with the 49ers? Why, why would you? Why it, would you ask that it, dude? Why would you ask this poor man saying, this? Who doesn't get a break to, to jinx himself? <laughs> <But> that big <laughs> one. <laughs> He's called jinx. The big one is Debo. <laughs> He's going to jinx himself. Debo, Debo staying in San Francisco. No. Right? Everything's cool. Everything's cool. He's followed the 49ers. They're following him. He's good. Everything's fine, right? 
can't just ask about the schedule release this week, could you? <laughs> <laughs> um, look, if you're asking me, I, I mean, I can't guarantee anything. I can tell you what everybody should be watching. Number one, watch Kyler Murray. Like, what is Kyler Murray going to do? Is he going to show? Yep. Because look, there's, there's, yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's see, let's see huh. what happens when um, the full squad mini camp happens. Okay, let's see exactly. You know, a if Kyler shows, b the questions he answers. You know, kind of what the dialogue is. Um, I still think. Personally, I believe that there will be an extension hammered out by the time the season begins. And I, I think if there is not an extension hammered out, I would I would squarely put Kyler in the Russell Wilson category of last year. We're like, okay, so we just waiting to get through the season and this guy's gonna get traded. I would kind of look at Kyler like that in 2022 if there's not an extension by the time the season starts. Arizona is very optimistic. It's they're gonna they're, it's gonna get an extension done. They're just like, hey. There's a process to this. It's a whole long off season. It doesn't have to be done right now. Um, it's going to get done. So, but I would still pay attention to Kyler Murray. Um, I'm curious to see what happens with Odell Beckham Jr. because the Rams were very confident. You know, speaking to some people in, in the organization, it sure seemed that they thought we're gonna we're gonna be able to get a deal done with him in its time. I still think that's likely, but the longer this goes the more there might be other teams out there kind of picking around going, Hey, maybe, you know, maybe you want to come here and give us an opportunity, you know, uh, on a, on a short term sort of rental situation before you enter the free agency market again. Um, Jadavion Clowney, I think gets done in Cleveland, but again, this is like how much longer this is going to drag on. And then obviously Baker Mayfield. Um, they're going to look the way Cleveland's operating right now. They're going to expect Baker Mayfield to show up for the full squad mini camp. Okay. The mandatory. Okay. Um, they're going to expect Baker Mayfield to show up for training camp. Okay. Like they're operating, like we're keeping this guy in the fold and we're going to figure it out. One other thing too. Wow. One other thing. This is a good one, actually. Um, I, I want to see what's going on with Trey Lance in San Francisco. Okay. Because, um, there shouldn't be, you know, there's starting to be this circulation out there that, Hey, maybe part of the reason why you know, they're fine keeping Jimmy G. And we talked about this early on in the offseason. Maybe part of the reason why they're okay with Jimmy G being an insurance policy is because they're still not 100% sure Trey Lance is ready to be a starting quarterback in 2022. That bears watching. It absolutely bears watching. So I, that's, not the, that's not what the 49ers want out there. They believe Trey Lance is ready to go. You know, we're going to move with this guy. But they... I don't know, man. I just, I do think there's a, there's definitely a possibility the organization looks at Jimmy G as an option that maybe they need to have, not just sort of a luxury that they'll carry. That was a hell of an alley oop, Mike. Well, so much for slow. You just emptied your notebook and yeah. wrote a column on live, whatever this is. You just, <laughs> there just wrote is. a column. Like, hey. like, like transcribe that and turn that in. What to watch for yeah. in the NFL if stuff. you think it's slowed. Charles Robinson, we love you, man. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Good right, stuff, thanks, John. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.